Hey, Heath. Heath, what are you doing here? Michael, don't bother me right now, man. I've got a ton of work to do. I just don't have time to do this right now. Heath, man, hey, uh, uh, you know there's a better way, right? Come on, Michael. Really? Heath, get over here. Come on. All right, Michael, show me what you got, buddy. What's that crayon for, Michael? Are you marking the defects? How do you, wait, what? How does the machine? Oh my gosh. Michael. How does it know how to calculate? How does it know what pieces to cut next? So Michael, you're loading it while the machine's moving at 450 feet per minute? You're on your second board already. It would have taken me five minutes to do that. And it, and it's keeping it square. And it's getting sorted into the right lengths automatically. Michael, that machine is fast. Wow, and it's safe too. It looks like there's a light barrier up there so nobody gets hurt. Very impressive, Michael. All right. I think you've shown me the light, buddy. Very impressive machine. So no one, hey, guys, in all reality, my name is Heath Mogsig. I'm a Southeast Regional Manager. And this is Michael Mushket. He's the product manager for everything green, including chop saws. So Michael, let me hand this over to you. Can you start the presentation? All right, guys. Hey, uh, welcome to, uh, to the next video. Today, we're showing you the S90 Speed. Uh, that's the product uh, from our Demter facility. So the S90 Speed is the fastest uh, push feed saw uh, in the country, the fastest push, push feed saw in the world. So push feed saw because we have a pusher that grabs the material and moves it uh, uh, through the machine. Uh, we have the saw blade in the middle, it's an up cut. So saw blade comes from the, uh, comes, uh, from the bottom, uh, cuts the material to the desired length, uh, whatever is programmed in that cut list. Afterwards, we're moving on to uh, an outfit uh, conveyor with different kickers. Yeah, and just to give you a little history. So I, I think the optimizing started back in the late 90s. So before then, they were doing a lot of chop saw uh, and how we integrated into some mechanization and some push feed, you know, all started back in the late 90s and that's where the transition really happened. Optimizing your material. So it, just to give you an example, and I, I know the camera's not exactly here, but so you're gonna have knots and defects. And so what we were showing you when I was actually doing some chop saw was w w the dilemma of using a manual chop saw. And who's got time and who can calculate exactly where the knot's going to be, how much material I'm going to have left, you know, what, what pieces or parts are going to fit in there the best, most optimized way. And that's one of the big advantages of the optimization machines today. So and this is where the S90 comes into play. Uh, it's really more about accuracy when we get into this industrial level of equipment. Uh, so not only are we going to improve your yield dramatically, you're spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 in yield, or excuse me, in material, plan on improving your yield a good 15% immediately. So we can drop that cost of material on a monthly basis. So there's some just huge benefits. So not only is it a yield saving, but obviously you can see what would take me all day could probably be wrapped up here in a couple hours. So there's some, uh, some additional benefits. Um, and Michael, you want to chat a little bit about maybe board footage and you know, what some of the calculations are? Sure. So um, <clears throat> right here we have the controller. That's where we have our cut list. Cut list means um, all the material that we have to cut uh, for that specific day or for that specific job. Uh, this year can be, uh, the cut list can be fully uh, uh, customized to uh, whatever you need. So here in the beginning we see we have the products that are currently active. That's what we're cutting. Our length, uh, minimum and maximum width. 
Uh, there's actually talking about width because there's actually another option that we can add onto the machine, which is automatic width measuring. Well, the automatic width measuring is very important if you're cutting, for example, uh, random width uh, parts or you want to cut uh, uh, parts for glue up or uh, center panels for cabinets, for example. Uh, for that specific product, it's not really required to have a certain width, but the length is very important. So that's why we talk about uh, random width. Uh, so the machine is automatically me measuring the width of the material and then uh, optimizing the board to get to only cut what we really need. So with that, Heath was talking about the yield. With that, we are improving uh, our yield and uh, decreasing uh, the waste that the machine is producing. Um, the machine, uh, we can have a, a required um, cut quantity. So this is that would be the, um, the amount of product that we need to cut from that certain uh, length. Uh, the machine, is all, the machine obviously also knows what already has been cut. So it will only cut what we need and stop when we're done. All right. Uh, yeah, Heath, you were talking about yield and waste. Uh, let's show them how much waste we are generating on this machine. Yeah, no, great idea, Michael. So we, we, we look at waste a little differently. And so we, we look at it as knots. And, and knots and what excess material is. So over time, as you can see, you can see all the orange lines, our crayon markings. Um, and, and so to minimize that is the whole concept, but how do you calculate the rest of the material afterward? So, and again, when you're wanting to improve on your yield 15 to 20%, uh, this is an, a phenomenal machine to, to use in, in your process. So, and, and also just to give you an idea, sort of on the end feed, this is our stock S90 speed. It's 4.5 meters on the end feed. It's about a 14 and a half foot machine. Approximately 12 to 14,000 linear feet of material through it in an eight hour shift. Uh, and again, that'll vary depending on exactly your product lengths. Uh, but there's a number of different features on it. We have the gripper because it's so fast. We actually have a little knife blade on the front of it that'll hold the material so gravity doesn't allow it to move forward. You can see, yep, you can see that the heavy duty top piece that's actually gonna put pressure on the top of the board so it lays flat. You can see the angle that's actually gonna hold it against the fence so it stays square. Uh, and then we also have a roller on the outfeed that does the same thing. So, um, it, and so maintaining the squareness of the part. Uh, then of course we have the, the wastegate. This is a pneumatic wastegate. Uh, and we also have other options for that too, but all of your waste gets dropped down the wastegate and does not go on the conveyor. So when you got waste on the conveyor, you're, you're going to, uh, the, uh, the belt will be worn out more, there's more products to interfere with your kickers. There's a number of dilemmas, a number of reasons why you would not want to put the waste on your belt. Now, for some of our customers, they want to be able to maintain waste and maybe there's some certain benefits for that. And so we can, of course, accommodate that. Um, and Michael, you want to talk about some of the printing and what goes on with that? Yeah, sure. So uh, on this machine, <coughs> we are uh, we are using a Riajet printer. We're printing uh, from the top. Uh, Heath, if you maybe just want to grab a piece and show us how that looks like on the product. Uh, so we're printing from the top. So as the material gets cut, uh, it runs on the conveyor belt, uh, just like that. And once it passes the printer, the printer actually prints the length that has been cut um, onto the workpiece. So that makes it very easy for the operator to identify, especially if you have work pieces that are very close in length. Let's say you have a six and a half, six and a quarter, uh, and a, a seven inch part. That might be hard uh, for an operator to very quickly uh, find the, the, the right length of, uh, of piece. So that's why we're using a rear jet printer. We're printing from top. It can be, con differ uh, it can be configured uh, many different ways. In this case, we have one print head, uh, we can put up to four print heads um, on this printer stand. Um, every printer can print up to 30 characters in length. If we would like to print something that's uh, maybe two lines or up to four lines, uh, th th that's where we would bring in those additional print heads. We can also uh, print barcodes directly on the material. One yes, question, he... uh, Can you print on different sides of the board? Can you print other than, than just the dimension? Can you do other? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, in regards of uh, what, what can be printed, so we can print uh, alphanumeric characters, we can print barcodes. Uh, uh, in regards to the orientation, we can print from the side, uh, from top, like this. We can print from the side, 
uh, that would be in front of the saw blade. Uh, there would be a printer sticking out from the side fence and printing on the side of the board. So yeah, there's 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 many different ways uh, how we can print um, on the material. There's also options uh, to have label printers and things like that, but that would be probably more for uh, more of our uh, uh, entry level machines like the Unicut or an, or an S50. All right. So um, after the printer, the material goes onto uh, the outfeed conveyor. And here in this scenario, uh, because we have limited space in our showroom, obviously, uh, we're using two kickers. Um, so once the material moves onto the conveyor belt, the kicker uh, knows uh, where that piece is at and kicks the material either into a bin or a sorting table or another conveyor belt where it's transported to the next, uh, to the next process. Uh, Christian, if you want to look here up top, what that, that TV that we see here, um, that's our sort line uh, monitor. So what that is doing, it shows us uh, on the very left side, you see the length, uh, you see the different width of material. So if there would be, a, uh, if we would have width measuring, it would show us the width of material. And then we go to required quantity, uh, produce quantity and the kicker. So um, where this is very helpful for the operator that stands at the end of the sword line, he can see the product that is coming and he knows immediately on which kicker that uh, specific product will be um, ejected. So that just makes it easier for the operator and, and again, faster to identify uh, which piece is where and what, um, what he has to do with it next. All right. Um, and Heath, I know there's uh, different uh, options uh, or at, le at least different uh, lengths on the outfit conveyor, right? Yeah, so Yeah, no, and I think we can customize that. We do have a stock. I think it's a 7.5 meter three kicker stock machine for our S90 speed. Right. Uh, but also the one variable that we forgot to mention that's very critical of this S90 is the repeatability. The machine repeatability is 0.1 millimeters. So the accuracy will prevent you from requiring a secondary process if you're going to go into a, 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 an end matcher for an example. So, but also, not only do we have the S90 speed, which is sort of the top of the line in the industry, but we also have an S90 production that will also allow you to do the same high quality, accurate cuts, allow you the same process, the printing options, sorting again for your different, whether it's different projects or different lengths. So there's a number of different uh, stock machines we have. And of course, there's a budget that may have a little influence on exactly what machine you may, may be looking into. So, but there's a number of different options. Michael did a phenomenal job. Um, I, I think outside of that, the S90 Speed is probably our number one selling when it comes to cabinet shops. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, yeah, if you're so that doing... Was, that, was probably, that, was, uh, that was probably my next question. Heath, uh, I know you're out in the field uh, with our agents. Where do you see uh, that S90? Like, uh, what kind of customers are using this kind of saw? Well, when it comes to the customer, I would say cabinet shops are probably the number one user. If you're running anywhere from 200 doors, maybe, yeah, 200 doors, to maybe a thousand doors a day, the S90 speed is going to be the machine for you. Um, and so, and of course, de depending on where the production is, maybe an S90 production to maintain that accuracy. Uh, but we have other machines as well, other push feed machines uh, that allow you a similar capacity, maybe a little bit less, but le less accuracy. Right. Um, but no, the S90 speed, I think there's some furniture opportunity here. Uh, but for the most part, it's our cabinet and furniture, guys. Be again, because of the accuracy the machine has available. Right, so. right. That, that makes sense. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention um, on the infeed. So as we see here, as, he, uh, as Heath mentioned, this is a four and a half uh, meter infeed with the pusher. Um, we also have the option, and we sold a few machines uh, with a lateral chain feeder on the infeed. Um, so what uh, that will basically uh, uh, give you the advantage so you basically have lateral chain feeder uh, sticking out the infeed. You load your material uh, onto the infeed conveyor and the infeed conveyor is automatically feeding the saw. So you're just getting a little bit uh, further away from that uh, fast moving uh, uh, pusher. And um, it should also increase your, uh, your, your capacity by a little bit because you basically have a buffer right in front of the machine. So it, it, it just makes sure the machine uh, is, uh, is being fed all the time. Um, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's basically cover most of the uh, most of the specs and the features of our S90 speed. I'm just glad I don't have to hand chop this material anymore. Right. That's it. So. All right. Uh, thank you, guys.